Hi, this is the second legislative video in a series based on the results of my recent legislative survey. This week we are talking about education funding. A few years ago the Supreme Court ruled that the state has to take on its responsibility to fund our schools. The legislature is finally discussing the options this year and we should see a plan in the next couple of months that will solve problems in our education funding system. There are several options being discussed here in Olympia. There is good and there's bad in both proposals. The final solution will probably be some combination of various parts of each plan. To be clear, since 2012, the legislature has invested 4.6 billion additional dollars into education. But despite these increases, our current system still doesn't cut it for students, teachers, and our taxpayers. One of the reasons is because we must end the over-reliance of local levy dollars to pay for teachers' salaries. This requires the state to provide all the funding for this basic education cost. So, what's on the table? I'm going to talk about some of the ideas from all the plans and you can see how the puzzle will eventually come together. One of the options being looked at is to replace local levy dollars with state money. This means reducing or eliminating many local levies and putting in its place a uniform statewide property tax, making sure it is as revenue neutral as possible for our homeowners and our property taxpayers. Doing this would actually add about $1.4 billion to education funding every two years for the next few years. The good news is, some school districts will see a property tax reduction. Other advantages include a decrease in the average property tax of about 30%. Statewide property taxes will go down about $2.4 billion. School districts no longer need to fill the gaps in the salary costs, and the state would pay local maintenance and operation costs. We also need to talk about how we're going to pay our teachers. Right now, districts get money based on the number of staff and teachers they employ. Option one, would keep that same model in place but add extra money to raise salaries. By 2019-2021, the average salary would be about $71,000 per year plus benefits. It also requires beginning teachers to be paid starting salary of about $45,000 a year. This option also includes a regional plan for cost of living differences across the state. Option two would change the traditional model of how schools are paid. Instead of paying it based on the number of teachers and staff members, schools would be paid based on the number of students enrolled. Schools would be given an average of about $12,500 per student. There would be additional money available for students such as low income, special education, homeless students and English language learners. The plan also increases beginning teacher salaries from $35,000 to about $45,000 a year. Cost of living adjustments for teacher salaries will be made by increasing the amount of money given to the school districts for the number of students enrolled. Teachers living in areas with high rental rates, like Seattle, would get an allocation of $10,000 per year. The plan does not require new taxes, but would cost about $1.4 billion more from the state's current budget. Thanks for watching my video on education funding. If you did not get an opportunity to participate in the survey and would like to share your comments, concerns or ideas, please feel free to call my office at 360-786-7892 or send me an email at mark.harmsworth at ledge.y.gov. Thank you.